Hey genealogy friends, today we're going to talk about records, files, and archives. Where to go and where to look. There are lots of different types of records that can be used for genealogical research. Periodicals, journals, society newsletters are a great resource if you've not looked at different societies around the country and the publications they have, you're really missing out. Uh, there are books that are resources and records, uh, digital records, vertical files, surname files, obituary cards, donations and boxes of things that families have donated to different archives, special collections. Then there are some white glove type places and family histories. There are lots and lots of kinds of records. We're going to talk about each one of these. There is a hierarchy, though, to the archives system in the United States. Um, there are national archives, multi-state, state, regional, county, and in some cases township or borough, and city. But one thing you have to keep in mind is that boundaries have changed over time. So it's important to decide, you know, do you need to go or what can you do in person versus what can you do over the Internet? And we're going to talk in a future topic about how to plan for a research trip. But today we're going to talk about the hierarchy and where you can find things. Don't forget while you're searching that there are a lot of different, uh, there are a lot of different locations, not just a national or state or, or um, county archive. Libraries have tremendous collections. And some library cards will allow you, allow you to access databases and collections from home. So check your local area and see if there's a place nearby that will allow you to access some of those paid sites that libraries have memberships for when you're at home. Also, your genealogical societies have newsletters, one-of-a-kind items, special collections, donations, and all of them that I've ever been to have some sort of indices. They have indexed um, censuses a lot of times. They've indexed books that are in their collection, county histories, and other resources. It's a really important place to visit those genealogical societies and archives to see what they have that's unique. Also, don't forget universities. There aren't just records there, but sometimes there are photo archives. Uh, sometimes their library system has yearbooks, old yearbooks going way back. I know that I live near the Ohio State University, and they have a tremendous photo archive collection. I've found uh, photos of my grandfather who played football for the Ohio State Buckeyes, and he was also an All-American wrestler. And I've found photos of him in a number of places there. Um, some of them by name, they know his name and they know they took a picture of him, but he was also in a fraternity, so there are some pictures where he's in group shots from fraternities. Also, uh, that same era is when the Ohio Stadium was being funded and built, and so there were, at the time, there were fundraising efforts and public information type efforts where students march down High Street to the State House to show the community that as Ohio State University students, they were athletes, they were well kept and, and very physically fit. And so um, they used students in promos of that sort. And there were photos there. And I found my grandfather in photos um, of those marches as well. So don't disregard your local university. Um, for the Columbus, Ohio area, where I am from, there are two LDS, Family History Centers. Um, there's one in Columbus in Dublin, Ohio, and there's one in Marion, Ohio. There's also one on the east side of the Columbus in Reynoldsburg, Ohio. So check around for your local LDS facility. The National Archives in Washington, D.C., um, is something that probably most people are aware of as having records. Um, I don't think their, their website is particularly intuitive or easy to use, but they do have a website where you can look for military records and, 
and all sorts of, gov of documents that the government's collected in the National Archive. Uh, the Daughters of the American Revolution is also a National Archive. Uh, the Newbury Library of Chicago is part of the archive system. And there are some regional archives that are associated with the National Archives. For example, Dayton, Ohio has one that's a regional repository. There are some multi-state archives available if you're interested in looking at territories or if you're looking at, um, in Ohio, we often talk about the tri-state area in Ohio, Indiana, Kentucky, or sometimes people research an area in, um, in the country that's uh, by the Ohio River and it's a piece of Ohio and West Virginia and Kentucky where people kind of fluidly went across borders and lived in different states at different times. But there are some multi-state archives that have some specialties. Um, the Midwest Genealogical Center in Independence, Missouri. Um, I read recently where they have a new collection uh, where they have indexed uh, railroad records. So as most of you in the Midwest and um, know, a lot of people work for the railroad, traveled to find work on the railroad, and so those are pretty valuable records, particularly if you've got someone that kind of fell off the grid, you're not sure where they went. Um, they have indexed those records and placed those online. Allen County Public Library in Fort Wayne, Indiana is amazing. If you haven't been there, go there. Uh, they have a tremendous amount of records in Allen County, and their library is so user-friendly. The people who work there are outstanding in terms of help and support. I have a picture here of the uh, family history room. This is um, at Allen County Public Library. They have the second largest genealogical collection in the country. And the stacks here in the family history room are just stacks and stacks of bound books where people have sent in their family histories and the library has bound them, placed them on the shelves, and indexed them. It's a tremendous resource for those of us who have brick walls or family we're trying to find. Also, Allen County uh, Public Library was the uh, home of Percy. It was created by the staff of the library. Um, it's an index for periodicals. And there are 11,000 periodical titles, and they have 2.25 million entries by surname or location. And there's a, uh, there's a link here to Find My Past, which is where the collection, Percy Collection, is now housed. Um, but that was something that uh, Allen County Public Library began many years ago. We have state archives, and for the region of the country where I live in Ohio, we have lots of different state archives. If you happen to live in another part of the country or you're researching in another part of the country, uh, almost every state that I've ever researched in has a state archive system. So make sure you go online and check it out. And um, the Ohio History Center in Columbus uh, used to be called the Ohio Historical Society. Uh, is right in the center of Columbus, Ohio. They have um, most of the housing of the state archives. There's also some of the collection, the State of Ohio Library collection, that's partly housed at the Columbus Metropolitan Library. And the Ohio Genealogical Society in Mansfield is a wonderful uh, library full of resources. And uh, so we are actually quite fortunate in the center part of the state of Ohio to have such wonderful archives at our disposal. There are some regional archives in Ohio. There's a list here, and I'll show you a map on the next slide, but um, most of these are housed at universities. Bowling Green State University, Ohio University, Wright State, University of Cincinnati, Western Reserve, University of Akron, Youngstown Historical Center, and there also is a regional archive called the Miami Valley Collection. This photo is from Wright State University. Um, I was there recently. It's not a very large room, um, but it has 
a tremendous collection of things that I've never seen in any other library. So don't discount the uh, universities and the regional archives and see if your state has those. The Ohio Regional Archive System is set up by county groupings. So you can see in the upper left hand corner in Wood County, Bowling Green State University is there, Wright State University in Montgomery County and so on. So each one of the regions has a repository for those particular counties. And the red section in the center, Franklin County is where the Ohio History Center is, the State of Ohio Library. And so we have quite a wealth right here in the center of the state, but we have all kinds of records all throughout the state. Remember that the, the Ohio system, the Ohio records and counties, um, the counties are a fairly new um, entity and boundaries change. So if you can't find what you're looking for in one particular county, research about that and figure out what the parent county was because chances are the records might be housed in another location. There are lots of county archives in Ohio. I've been to a number of them. Uh, several of my favorite, uh, Montgomery County in Dayton houses the Miami Valley collection. That has to do with the uh, Miami River and the Little Miami and the Big Miami, Great Miami River. And both of those um, are, are regional areas that are housed within the Miami Valley collection. So if you have family that lived along those river routes or use those as trade, or if you wanna learn something about the Ohio floods of 1913, uh, that's a great collection and that's housed at the Dayton Metropolitan Library. That's in Montgomery County, Ohio. Also Hamilton County, Ohio in Cincinnati has a riverboat collection. They have quite a huge collection. Um, last time I spoke to someone there, I believe it was the second largest riverboat collection uh, after I think St. Louis, uh, Missouri had the largest, but there's a second. So that's pretty impressive for this region of the country. The other thing that is unique in some of these collections and county archives, um, this is from Hamilton County. They have a daguerreotype of the Cincinnati Panorama of 1848. Uh, there is a link to that. And this is one eighth of the complete photo, the photo that's shown here. It's a very long, thin photo, but the detail on it is incredible. And they have this photo on display at their library, but you can also go online at the link shown and you can, you can see it, you can zoom in, you can zoom out, you can read about the history of it but it's, it's pretty interesting to learn about the different packet boats and the inns and the housing and the people who came up and down the Ohio River to do trade and to move and to rebuild and to settle. Delaware County is just north of Franklin County, Ohio and has its own county archive system. I snapshotted here an example of some of the things that a particular county might offer that you're not necessarily thinking about, but when you're doing genealogical research, you may find really helpful. There are all kinds in the Delaware County Library, they have all kinds of Delaware and Ohio history books. They have books that are written by local authors. They have cemetery records and tombstone inscriptions. A lot of those that were done either by local genealogical societies or DAR, uh, they oftentimes have information about the cemeteries in terms of who was reinterred somewhere, if a cemetery was moved or damaged. Oftentimes they'll have lists of Civil War soldier mar markers, Revolutionary War markers, War of 1812 markers, and that sort of thing. Um, generally they have historical directories for the city and the county. Uh, and atlases, flat maps, all that sort of thing um, for property. Local church histories are often archived there. I've been in many county library systems where the church no longer exists, but the library has the records of the church. So they might have the lists of baptisms, burials, marriages, and that sort of thing. 
They generally have um, census records at these types of libraries as well, often on microfilm, but I've been in some where they still have print books and they often have indexed them. Uh, the Delaware Gazette is the local newspaper, so they will have oftentimes co complete collections to their newspaper. Some of the larger libraries, um, like the Columbus Metropolitan Library, might have portions of that, but in the local county library, you're going to find a lot more thorough collection. They, al they also have how-to books for genealogy. Um, in Delaware, they have a special collection called the Buick Index, which is the guide to local genealogical resources. Uh, they have local family histories. People have um, done their family histories, written stories, um, printed charts and things like that and donated them. So they're one of a kind things you might find there, not necessarily digitized, but you might find them on the location there. Um, and they have yearbooks. For Delaware County or Delaware High School, for the Ohio Wesleyan University. Um, so they, they have yearbooks that they've accumulated over time for those specific areas. There are magazines, newsletters, and Ohio history files, pamphlets, articles, all kinds of other materials. A lot of places I've been that are county libraries also have tourism. They have information on farming. They might even have the farm censuses if there wasn't a county system at that time, or you might find those at the regional archives. So the county library systems are a wonderful resource for all things. Occasionally you'll find a township that has its own archive. This is from Dark County, Ohio. Uh, this is on the Ohio-Indiana border. And this is happens to be one of the locations that I was researching for my family. And this website has an interactive map where you can click on each individual township within that county and all sorts of records and resources come up. There are city archives that you shouldn't overlook. Um, the reason why I featured St. Paris Genealogy Room, it's in Champaign County, Ohio. For those of you who aren't familiar, it's about an hour west of Columbus, Ohio. And St. Paris, um, in addition to being a place where I do have family as well, um, uh, it's the kind of little library that I might have just driven past. And I happened to be on, on the road driving and I saw it and I thought, you know, let me check that out. So I went inside and I was shocked at the size of their genealogy room, the collection that they had. And you notice they have some sections here that I have photographed. And one of them is Ohio County information. There's also a whole cemetery and funeral home collection. They have file cabinets full of all sorts of surname files and things like that. And they also have an entire wall of family histories that people have donated, one of a kind resources that I've never found anywhere else. So don't forget that some of those little teeny tiny towns, they might not even have a stoplight, but they might have a really great genealogy collection. So you might want to keep in mind a few internet searching tricks if you're trying to find some resources and not spend a lot of time online looking at things that really don't pan out. Uh, OCLC's WorldCat uh, they're housed here in Columbus, Ohio, but they are a, a world catalog system for libraries across the country and around the world. And so if there is a book about something, OCLC would be able to tell you where it is, how far it is from you, whether it's available on interlibrary loan, and that sort of thing. So it's a really excellent resource for finding some family history that you may or may not have um, been able to find in the past. Also, how to search Percy. We've talked a little bit about Percy already, but there is on Family Search a wiki page that will tell you the best search methods for Percy, and I recommend that you read that. There's a lot of really good information about there in there about how to find what you're looking for and how they have it indexed. Google Books is another excellent place to find resources, and if you go to books.google.com, it will show you a segment 
of Google that is searchable or out of print or out of copyright books. A lot of them are PDF'd or eBooks. And I search using family history in quotations with the surname. So for example, I have here Calderwood Family History. Also, I search for names like George Washington Calderwood with quotation marks, or you can search for a location or county history. So for example, if you're looking for Dark County, you can put Dark County in quotes. The really cool thing about Google Books is that if you find a PDF there, you can download it to your laptop or your computer if you want to. You can attach it to your family tree. But once you download the PDF, the amazing thing about it is that it's searchable. How many times have we been to a library or archive and we find a great county history book and it has all sorts of pictures and, and uh, information, but there's no index. So there's no way to really find what you want other than just flipping through page by page. So the nice thing about a PDF is that it is searchable. Uh, you can also download a lot of Google Books as an ebook format and it'll even let you choose the format that you want. So if you have a Kindle or a Nook or an I iPad with uh, Apple Books, uh, you would be able to read that at your leisure on your computer or on your tablet. There are some great sites uh, to search online for things. Ancestry, of course, there's a membership fee for that, but there are a number of different ones that are free. Family Search, uh, Find a Grave, Atlas of County Boundaries, Heritage Quest Online, and then Fold3 does have a fee involved. Also, I use the General Land Office records. Those are really fascinating. Um, even if you're not sure that you're looking for something in particular, just go in there and noodle around to see what's on there. It's pretty interesting. Uh, Jewish Gen is free. Archives.com has a fee for it. Uh, I believe the libraries have that uh, free version. Billion Graves is free. And Chronicling America has a lot of different uh, newspaper sites and all sorts of things on Chronicling America. So don't miss any of these. They may be big sites, but there's a lot of information that's very, very specific and very searchable within reach. Cindy's List is where I go if I want to get lost. <laughs> uh, it's enormous. It's a valuable resource. I've heard Cindy Engel talk many times about uh, her goal in having that resource there. And I use it a lot if I get stuck, if I get to the point where I'm not sure, um, if I can't think of where to look. For example, it might be a geographical area I'm not that familiar with. And so it might be in another state. And so I go to Cindy's List oftentimes, just kind of nose around to see what archives there are in different locations. It's a, also a really good place if you aren't sure where to start. But if you're a beginning genealogist, I would suggest that you start in some of the more methodical ways at smaller sites before you go to Cindy's List and just are deer in the headlights there. But I do use Cindy's List to get some ideas and see the scope of what. There are some terminology uh, in genealogy that you'll need when you're first getting started. There are genealogical terms that are in historical records and acronyms and abbreviated words. So I've included a link here to familysearch.org. They have an excellent, um, excellent spot where you can look up all kinds of genealogical terms. Also, there is for DNA specific, ISOG, the International Society of Genetic Genealogy, has a website where they have a wiki site um, of genetic glossary terms. And it's a great place if you um, are starting to learn about DNA or genetic genealogy and you're not sure what different things mean. Uh, they have some great wiki information at ISOG. As always, we talk about citations almost all the time, depending on, it doesn't even really depend on the lecture. We talk about citations uh, with almost every topic. If you want to know what to cite, how to cite, there are lots of different resources available. 
FamilySearch.org has a wiki page about how to cite your sources. And I think there, there are a number of different books, uh, websites, all sorts of different resources for citing sources. But as long as you contain some basic information within your citation, you'll be able to find your way back. Or more importantly, someone else who's researching the same thing might be able to find their way back to what you had found previously. So if you're citing um, a book or online source or anything that you find on location in one of these archives, author, title, the repository, the date and the page are really the primary five things. Um, some, some people include the library or archive call number, if you know that. And it might be important to include a preliminary comment about the source. It's not a requirement, but sometimes that will trigger your memory. So there have been things that I've found that are, are sources that are unusual. For example, I found something in a box that was donated as a special collection. So it might be worth noting that what you found was not a bound book. It wasn't, um, you know, any sort of document, but it was just a collection of papers or letters or diaries that someone had donated to an archive. So sometimes recording that kind of information becomes valuable when somebody's trying to retrace where you've been. Remember, if you don't recount your family history, it will be lost. Honor your own stories and tell them too. The tales might not seem very important, but they are what binds families and make e makes each of us who we are. That's from Madeline Langle. I hope you've enjoyed today's talk about where to find resources. And tune in next time. We're going to talk a little bit more about how to plan for a research trip.